Today we're going to cover how to get all 5 Inazuma Forgeable 4 star weapon blueprints. These involve a lot of quests which can take some time so I'm not going to go over every single step. However, I will share some tips for parts that I had trouble with and I will showcase where to collect certain items you're going to need for these quests. First off, I want to cover the 3 weapons that you get by completing entire quest lines. These are the Hakushin Ring Catalyst which you get by completing the Sacred Sakura Cleansing Ritual quests. The Amenoma Kageuchi Sword is gotten from the Farmer's Treasure quests. Then you have the Katan Cross Spear which is gotten from the Orobashi's Legacy quests. Finish each quest to get the weapon blueprint as a reward at the end. For the Katsuragi Kiri Nagamasa Claymore, you need to do the first part of the Tatata Tales quest. This is going to open up the Mikage Furnace area which we need access to. Last, the Hamayumi Bow was originally thought to be not obtainable yet, however no one could get it because it was on a time lockout. I'll explain more at what you need to do but basically this blueprint takes 7 days to get. It also is not a world quest so you could have missed it entirely. For the rest of this video I'll briefly talk about each of the quest lines, we'll cover the basic puzzle mechanics and discuss issues I had in some spots, I'll show the locations of collectibles and finally explain what the deal is with the Hamayumi blueprint. Please use the timestamps in the description to move around at your leisure. Starting with the Hakushin Ring and the Sacred Sakura Cleansing Ritual Quest, the main puzzle you deal with involves changing the order of where the electro current is going to go. Throughout the quest you need to purify 5 shrines and these will give you a pattern to recreate. The starting point always starts with one symbol and you can change the order by interacting with the different pedestals around the room. For this first one you can see number 2 is on the immediate right. 3 is in the top right, 4 is in the bottom left, and 5 is in the top left. Once you got the pattern figured out, pray at the starting point and defeat the samurai that appears. Now, starting with the second part of this quest, you need to gather 3 shrine maidens around 3 fox statues. Talking to the ghostly shrine maidens makes them teleport around the area and you need to keep finding them and talking to them until they appear at these 3 fox statues. The first two are pretty obvious, however I spent a good 15 minutes or so trying to find the third one. Turns out they are hiding on top of the roof of the shrine in the leaves. Now as you progress through this quest line, you get the memento lens and gadget. Eventually, anytime you may be stumped throughout it, use Elemental Sight to find the little fox statues around and inspect them using the Memento Lens. At the end of this questline, you're going to need to pick up the Mask of Memories left on the ground. Unfortunately, you cannot wear this mask, instead you have to use it in your inventory and this is how you get the Hakushin Ring Blueprint. Next let's talk about the Amenoma Kageuchi Sword which is from the Farmer's Treasure Quest. The actual quest is really simple, but you need to do a bunch of things to even start it technically. First off, go to Jinrin Island and climb to the top. Here you will find a person trapped in a cage. Talk to him and he'll have you get the key which is in a tree still on the top of this rock. You can free him from the cage, you're going to have a long interrogation with him and learn he is Simon Jiro. Simon will tell you to find 4 stone slates. You get no markers for this part so I'll show you where they are. You will need to have done certain parts of the sacred soccer cleansing ritual so I do suggest finishing that quest beforehand. First location is next to the wave rider spawner above the Kamisato residence. Take out the surrounding nobushi and the stone slate is just under a tent on the beach. Next location is the first shrine we purified under Konda village. Head back down the well and to the right side of the shrine is an electro barrier. Use the electro grana to pass through and you'll find a little treasure room. On the left side is another stone slate. For locations 3 and 4, these require you to have lowered the water in the ruins under Arami. To do this, head to where the shrine is located from the Sacred Soccer Quest and on the left side is a box puzzle and a pool of water. Solving this puzzle lowers the water level in that hole and you can now jump inside.
From here, you're going to have to swim across the hallway to the staircase. You're going to find another box puzzle. Solving this one will completely lower the water level and in this room is also stone slate number three. With the water lowered, you can now go to the area outside and open the door. This hallway takes you to the waypoint under the ocean as well as the mechanical ray boss. Once you're at the waypoint on the left side of the room will be stone slate number 4. Picking up all four stone slates will trigger the actual farmer's quest to appear in your menu. Go back to Simon and it's a pretty straightforward quest. At the very end, you'll get the Aminoma Kageuchi blueprint as well as a free Northlander sword billet to make it. Our last full quest is the Orobashi's Legacy which grants us the Kitane Cross Spear. To start this quest, talk to Kanji who is on Yashiori Island. He is north of the Statue of the Seven by Higi Village. We will be collecting two items for four separate shrines in this questline. One item is a floating orb, the other is a rock looking formation on the ground. The quest makes use of the big pillars surrounding water bubble shields. The idea behind these puzzles is that from the glowing purple pillar, you need to send an electro ball or all the way to the other pillars and then you're going to hit the bubble shield at the very end. Each pillar can be turned and you can orient the angle at which they will redirect the ball. To see if you're correct, attack the big glowing pillar, it'll shoot out a signal. You'll know it's right because there's a cutscene. With the shield down, you can collect the two items for this first part. Take these back to the shrine to move on. I will now be showcasing the rest of the cutscenes for these puzzles because they act like the solution basically. I will also showcase the location of the two items for each shrine. It is very possible to pick up the items before starting this questline. You're supposed to use Elemental Sight to find their locations but if you don't see anything, you may have already picked it up.
For this very last shrine, don't be dumb like me, the warding stone is on the ground next to the shrine and the pearl is actually right above the shrine. Once you slot these in, not only do you get the blueprint for the polearm, but you also clear up the continuous rain and lightning on Yashiori Island. The gorge is still pretty deadly, but at least Ball won't try to smite you every 5 seconds now. To get the Katsunagi Kiri Nagamasa Claymore, you will need to do the first part of the Tatata Tales World Quest. To begin, you're going to need to head to the Kuju Encampment Waypoint and you're going to find two NPCs that have a conversation. After this, you're going to have to go talk to Xavier, who is the main quest giver for Tatata Tales. He is by the waypoint on the left side of Tatata Suna. Talk to Xavier, you're going to need to go to three spots to observe the furnace. You'll notice there is a barrier around this entire area and we need to get inside of this to get our Claymore blueprint. For the quest step, one spot has you fighting some Fatui. For the spot by the cliffs, you're going to need to chase the Electro Sealy thing a couple times before you can investigate the spot. Just fly up with the Electro Grana and it's hanging out by the big crack in the barrier. For the last spot, you need Electro Grana to enter the barrier and there's one place near the shipwreck on the beach. At this point you need to go back to talk to Xavier and now you need to use three electro cannons to break the barrier. Go to these spots on the map and pick up the electro granite right next to the cannons to interact with them. You need to move the cannon into the right position to hit the cracked spots and this is just trial and error. After you break the third one, I believe that's all we need to do for Tatata Tales. I would recommend doing the whole questline since it gets rid of the passive Bell Thunder damage in this area. Otherwise, you need to pick up those electro granite to stop getting hurt. With the furnace area now open, we need to find three keys around this place. From the top of the area, jump onto one of the tallest houses with a chest on it. This will be key number one. After this, you're going to want to turn around and head to this spot under the cliffside. I already picked up the chest, but this is where key number two should be. Now you need to teleport to the right side waypoint, head down the area, and we need to get inside a barrier. Pick up an Electro Grana, head inside, and there is the third and final key. From here, we can head over to the arsenal. It's under the cliff on the map, and I'll show you how to get there from this third key. At this point, all you need to do is open the gate, defeat a couple of ruined sentinels in your way, and open the big chest inside. This will drop the Katsunagi Kiri Nagamasa blueprint.
Last but not least is the mysterious Hamayumi bow. As mentioned, it is time gated behind 7 daily resets, but just what do we need to do each day? Above Tatarasuna is an unmarked beach sticking out. Here you will find a man named Takashi who lets you open one of his chests in exchange for 3 mysterious conch shells. You can find these shells scattered randomly around this area. Just interact with the shiny specks on the beach. You can do this one time per daily reset. The rewards are usually just random ingredients with little value. Turns out you need to open any of these chests 7 times to get the bow blueprint to drop. It's not RNG, it doesn't matter which chest you open, you just need to do this process for 7 days. Speaking of which, there are actually many other side quests that you can do daily in Inazuma. This is including Tataru Tales, which updates to the next step on the next daily reset. Now that you got your brand new 4 star weapon blueprints, you're going to need materials to craft them. Unlike the original forgeable weapons, you need a new type of ore called amethyst lumps. These come from the bright pink crystals around Inazuma and they act like the blue crystal chunks back in Monster and Leeway. If you need Northlander billets, you do get that one free sword billet from the farmer's treasure quest. You can also get billets from the sacred sakura tree by turning in electro sigils. I know you can get a sword claymore and pole arm billet, so I assume you can also get a bow and catalyst one as well. It's going to require a good amount of electro sigils though. Besides this and various older rewards, you better start praying to the Archons for more billet drops from the weekly bosses. That's all I got for this video, hopefully you have some billets to make the weapons you want, and I'll see you in the next one.